One year after the event, we're going to reconstruct the Titan incident from a technical standpoint and shed light on the most widely accepted hypothesis, implosion. On June 16th, 2023, the Titan Bathyscaphe, carrying five people, is transported offshore by the ship Polar Prince. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Mocha, I'm the founder of Geopop. We are Italians and we produce scientific contents. So if you like it and if you didn't subscribe yet, please do it. For you it's the same, but for us it will make a huge difference. Let's go back to the video. In fact, bathyscaphs, unlike submarines and submersibles, do not have the autonomy to cover long distances and therefore need to be literally transported by another ship to the location where they will then dive. We could say that it's a little like when we go diving in the open sea with tanks. The boat takes us offshore and then we dive in and go down. The same concept applied to the Titan. So after leaving the port of St. John's, the Titan was transported 640 kilometers from the coast to where the wreck of the Titanic is located. After a full day's sailing, the five people arrive at the site and prepare for the dive to a depth of 3,800 meters, ready to behold the wreck of what is probably the most famous ship in history. It was 7 in the morning on June 18, 2023, and no one, absolutely no one, could have imagined that this dive was about to become a week-long media event of global proportions. But before diving down deep and seeing what might have happened with our exclusive 3D animation, it's important that we understand what the Titan was like. It was 6.7 meters long, 2.8 meters wide, and 2.5 meters high, so relatively small in size. It was designed for dives of up to approximately 3,800 meters below sea level, and could carry five people on board, including four crew members or passengers and one pilot. The Titan had a supply of oxygen that could last a maximum of about 96 hours, so we're talking about four days. The craft could move at a speed of approximately three knots, which corresponds to about 5.5 kilometers per hour, thanks to four so-called thrusters, which are electric propellers that were mounted in pairs two vertically and two horizontally, allowing it to move in any direction. Under the outermost part, which is the white shell that we all have seen, considered innovative and experimental, and pay attention here because this will help us understand the possible causes later on, the structure was essentially composed of three parts. Two titanium domes form the ends, the head and the tail, so to speak. The head, as you may have seen, had a porthole with a diameter of 53 centimeters, and there was a central body, that is, the hull, which was cylindrical and was not made of titanium, steel, or aluminum, as is the case for many bathyscaphs, but of a composite material made of carbon fibers cast in a subsequently solidified epoxy resin. This material is commonly known as carbon fiber reinforced polymer, or CFRP. According to Stockton Rush, the co-founder and CEO of OceanGate, the company that owned the Titan, the real innovation was precisely this central cylindrical part made of composite carbon fiber material. The question that arises at this point is, what were other bathyscaphs like? Well, other bathyscaphs were generally spherical in shape to distribute the pressure more evenly and were made of metal, mainly titanium, whose resistance was and is well established. So why was carbon fiber chosen in this case? The use of carbon fiber made the Titan not only more economical, but also lighter, allowing it to accommodate five people compared to the two or three people that other bathyscaphs could usually hold. Now that we understand the Titan's structure, let's dive down and figure out what might have happened in the depths. The descent began at 8 a.m. on June 18th, and it took approximately two hours to reach the Titanic, lying at a depth of 3,800 meters. The Titan was able to communicate with the surface ship via text messages. GPS signals and radio communications did not actually work at great depths underwater 
and therefore there was no continuous real-time monitoring of the conditions inside the submersible. The Titan descended at a speed of about 30 meters per minute, and the deeper it went, the higher the pressure on the bathyscaphe grew. The issue of pressure is key to understanding everything. In water, pressure increases by one atmosphere every 10 meters. So at a depth of 100 meters, there's a total of 11 atmospheres, because you also need to consider atmospheric pressure. At 3,000 meters, there will be 301 atmospheres of pressure. To understand how formidable a pressure of approximately 300 atmospheres actually is, consider that on an area of one square meter, it's equivalent to a weight of about 3,000 tons. By comparison, the Eiffel Tower weighs approximately 8,000 tons, so the pressure per square meter at that depth is equal to around a third of the weight of the Eiffel Tower. After an hour and 45 minutes of descent, the Polar Prince received a final update message indicating that everything was proceeding smoothly, but after that moment, all communications ceased. We still don't know exactly what happened down there, as official investigations are ongoing, but the most likely hypothesis is that there was an implosion. According to many experts, such as Professor Williams from the University of Sydney and Dr. David Gallo, at the kind of pressure the Titan was subjected to, even a minimal microscopic defect, not even visible to the naked eye, could have caused a catastrophic collapse. In the days following the incident, I think most of us were wondering, but how long did the implosion take? We have no real data on the matter, but theoretically, at that pressure, it only took an instant. And if you're wondering what exactly is an instant, how long is it? Well, I'll try to give you some examples. Your brain takes approximately 100 milliseconds or one tenth of a second to receive a pain signal. Your eyes need about 13 to 15 milliseconds to process an image. The Titan probably took less than a millisecond to implode. The search for the Titan was carried out by a large international coalition, including the United States Coast Guard, the United States Navy, and Canadian, French, and British authorities. On June 22, 2023, four days after contact ceased, the remains of the Titan were found approximately 500 meters from the wreck of the Titanic, at a depth of around 3,800 meters. Some of the debris was recovered, so it could be analyzed to try to determine what caused the incident. As I was saying, official investigations are ongoing, so for now, what we have is a hypothesis based on theory and on the visual analysis of images of the wreckage that was brought back to the surface. This hypothesis, the one suggesting an implosion, can be traced back to three main factors. The first concerns the shape of the hull. Its cylindrical shape would have made it structurally more prone to deformation when subjected to extremely high pressure. A perfect sphere, on the other hand, is able to distribute the pressure that compresses it more evenly, while a cylinder is more prone to deformation. Then there's a second factor, which is the material the hull was made of, namely carbon fiber, a composite material of carbon fiber. Carbon fiber itself is an excellent material. It's used for many things, even in Formula One and Grand Prix motorcycle racing. It has a low density, so it's very light, and it also has excellent technical properties, such as high tensile strength. But its resistance to compression can be unpredictable, especially when subjected to pressure that's 300 times greater than atmospheric pressure. So what am I getting at? And here we come to the third factor, which is actually connected to the second. The Titan had already made a number of dives before this one, and successive cycles of extremely high pressure, followed by normal ambient pressure, extremely high pressure, and ambient pressure, give rise to a phenomenon called fatigue. Fatigue in a material makes it less resistant. According to experts, the composite carbon fiber with this repeated stress would have undergone micro deformations that eventually caused its collapse. 
This appears to be confirmed by the fact that no large pieces of the carbon fiber hull have been found. In fact, most of the hull parts found are actually composed of the white coating material that was on the outside of the hull. There doesn't seem to be any trace of carbon fiber at all, or at least there are no macroscopic traces to be seen. Then there's another thing that needs to be mentioned, which is that the Titan was not certified by a third party. OceanGate did not seek independent third-party certification for the bathyscaphe, claiming that regulations would hinder innovation. I would like to share a personal reflection with you. The Titan incident, which unfortunately resulted in the tragic death of five people, reminds us of how small humans are in the face of the immense power of nature. The ocean's depths represent a limit. A limit that regards not only our knowledge but also our technology. It is a frontier that both challenges and humbles us. In fact, most of the ocean floor is still unexplored. It seems paradoxical when you think about it, but exploring hundreds of thousands of kilometers into space is often easier than going a few kilometers below the surface of the sea. When I think about this event, I feel compelled to emphasize the humility and respect we need to show towards our planet and its immense natural forces. Keeping in mind that our goal should not be to tame or control these natural forces to perhaps inflate our egos, but to understand them. Our goal is to understand them so we can coexist with them in the best way possible. After all, the Earth is stronger than us, infinitely stronger. That said, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I thank you for watching until the end. I'd also like to thank you for the appreciation and affection you always show us and I look forward to seeing you next time, always here on Geopop, Everyday Science. Bye.